What hobby makes you immediately think this person grew up rich? My grandfather was a country club type of guy. My uncle, who's incredibly wealthy, has the hobby of building and flying his own airplanes. There are apparently kits, but he has also bought and repaired little two-seater planes that went down. Hey, my grandpa also bought a little two-seater plane that he fixed up when I was a kid. My mom refused to let us ride in it because she said it looked like it would have belonged Fred Flintstone because of the lack of a floor. It's harder to push if it ever gets off the ground. My uncle, who was never super rich, worked in the family business, bought a farm, and ended up getting paid bank to let a company minor portion of it. He owns several airplanes and is working on getting his helicopter license. The rest of us are like point not wealthy, but that's his only splurge. He drives the junkiest car around and still works with my dad, pap, and uncle. I know several people who work at a desk, but got their pilot's license just because. I was amazed at how affordable it was to get a pilot's license. Considered doing it, but I know I would hate not being able to rent a plane. Because that chess what's expensive. A. Eh? Yeah it's not too bad. But still quite expensive as a just because hobby. The ground school isn't terrible. Honestly, it's a few hundred dollars online or closer to dollar sign 1k in person. You need at least 40 hours flight time. Most people average closer to 55 to 60. Half. Or more of that time is going to be with an instructor at an hourly rate plus you need to pay for plane rental fuel typically it's around dollar sign 110 dash 124 slash hours depends on market and fuel costs so let's estimate 1k for ground 6k for plane and probably 20 hours of instruction at 45 dollar slash hr 900 that comes out around $7,900. I'd round up closer to dollar sign 10k for a private pilot's certificate. It's not richy rich status, but it's definitely above most folks reach. Fine art collecting. It takes serious money to even consider going down that path. Also a certain type of education. We have a Goodwill overstock store that sells stuff the regular Goodwill couldn't sell for cheap. Original oil paintings turn up frequently for $5 or less. They aren't fine fine art, but they are art. Some are cool. I got a bad air original oil painting for like 35 bucks at a Goodwill. The artist is fairly well known. The value is irrelevant to me BC it's awesome and original. Polo. Years ago, I worked for Wrigley, gum company now owned by Mars, when it was still owned by the Wrigley family and William Wrigley Jr. was the CEO. My second day, I ran into Mr. Wrigley in the elevator, but didn't know who he was. During our small talk, it came out that I trained BJJ, still very new in the US 20 years ago, and I ended up asking him what sports he played. His response, oh, I play a little pickup polo from time to time. I can't even imagine how the hell a pickup game of polo might materialize. I can't imagine a dozen or so billionaires out riding their favorite polo horse and just happen to run into one another at the park. They can go through more than one horse in a game. Sometimes five horses. BJJ 20 years ago Zog. I don't know if I know many people who were training back then. Who are you even training with? Dude, this all the way. People think just horse riding is expensive, really isn't that bad. If you don't own a horse, it's owning a horse where it gets expensive. Imagine needing 4 to 5 well trained horses to compete in a single game, and those horses need people to care for them, work them, and tack them up during the event. All that means you're spending a lot of money on what is essentially soccer or hockey on horseback. A single player needs 4 to 5 horses. That's even worse than I thought. It's crazy that 100 years ago everyone owned a horse and only the rich owned cars. Now everyone owns a car and only the rich own horses. I guess point you could say the stables have turned. My exact first thought. Something about polo comes off as not only rich kids play it, but it's not like a middle class kid could get invited to come along like with winter sports or sailing. You need to know how to ride a fine horse. Hey you don't have to be rich to get into winter sports. My parents got tricked into a timeshare at a ski resort. So my inner city a spent a decade going there every winter looking completely out of place with old rentage. While everyone on the diamond slopes had brand new gear and freshly waxed boards or mayo. Marco, you rich bastard. Rich. Polo. Super rich. Elephant polo. The hardest part about elephant polo is getting them in the pool. Gocketing. 
Not the kind at arcades and stuff, but the real kind. It's how you get into Formula 1, that she's expensive. I had a 500 pounds twin engined gocket, that I ripped around the track every so often. But we go in cheap slash free as a mate did some work there. You see these kids rock up that probably would rather be somewhere else with these overbearing fathers who are trying to live their dreams through the kids. Screaming at them for just having fun, and not knocking it out off their lap time. The setups, the gear and even the vehicles they transport their carts, in our stupid money. We used to take their tires as they would one race and banem, but they still go for ages just fine for us. Recreationally if you just want to do it as a fun day out and hire, it's still expensive. You see these kids rock up that probably would rather be somewhere else with these overbearing fathers who are trying to live their dreams through the kids, screaming at them for just having fun, and not knocking it out off their lap time. The setups, the gear and even the vehicles they transport their carts, in our stupid money, change a few nouns, and you have just described pretty much any youth sport, sorts, I coach a 10U tournament baseball team point and to be fair, most of the kids at that level genuinely want to be there, but I can point you to at least 2 kids on my team, that are there to make mom and dad happy, and for no other reason. These are also the kids with the most expensive gear and sub 100 batting averages. Tim is not going to become an all-star hitter with that $350 bat. If he dives out of the box on any pitch, that looks like it might be a little inside. You know how to make a million dollars in auto racing. Well first, step 1. Start with 2 million dollars. Competitive karting is totally a financial black hole. But there is probably no cheaper track time than picking up an old cart on Craigslist, that isn't legal for competitive series. Between cheaper track time and super affordable consumables, you can run a full year of karting track days for way less than even the most clapped out Myrter AMD probably half the amount of track time. A season of the bottom series for kids can easily cost between 50k and 100k. That's expensive. Anything that doesn't match the climate of where they grew up, if they grew up in the desert, but they are a skiers and I assume they had the money to travel a lot, and own all the gear etc. I live in the desert, and have a ski area 15 minutes from my house. But yes to the general premise, Taos says hello, Arizona we out here. Many deserts are right next to mountains, as the mountains often cause a drought on the other side of the range. Well Jamaica participates in the Winter Olympics every year, and their bobsled team made for some cool runnings. Horse dressage for sure. I know some middle class folk who own a horse or two on a farm, but if you're riding in competitions, you're likely wealthy, depends on the level and competitions too. If they are under 30, aviation, if they are over 30, hell, probably still aviation, I've wanted to get my private pilot's license, as long as I can remember, but god em that hobby never stops needing loads of money, I can have like 5 other fully realized hobbies for the price of shoestringing that one. Falconry, you'd think but my poor a uncle in law somehow climbed a tree, and stole a falcon egg then raised it from hatching, it would hunt rabbit for him, squirrel, etc. And yes, that would be dinner, that's like a fantasy novel side plot, I'm equally appalled and impressed, you could even make this a more specific as credit question, what screams I'm a sordy prince? I was gonna say magic the gathering. But turns out it's my imagination limited by poverty. Magic can be really cheap to get into. You just have to pick the right format for your budget. Same for 40k apparently. Took me 4 years to buy my 2000 PTS of Neukrons back then. Probably cost me dollar sign 1500 ish. Other people in here being like Opolo players own 5 horses to play. Suddenly seems a lot cheaper. If still unaffordable. Collecting and driving sports cars. My fiancé Kay was telling me a story about the exchange students that lived with them, and how they were so nice, and would help take care of the house. I asked her why her exchange students stayed with them for so long, when all my high school exchange student friends had only stayed for a semester. It was at that moment she realized that she grew up with Swiss nannies. My family lived overseas for a while and my dad's company paid for a driver and two maids for us. There wasn't a lot of middle class living there. You either lived in a big house made of steel and concrete meant to withstand typhoons or small structures that could be easily rebuilt if the storms blew them down. Philippines. This sounds exactly like how my ex described her old family home. Apparently the walls and gates also helped. Keep out would be kidnappers looking for a quick ransom. 
in Southeast Asia and Middle East, it's amazing that it is far from uncommon for people to have a maid that is live in or part-time even without them being super rich. Scales of economy come into play, but they can get paid quite well in some cases. The live-in housekeeper tend to become part of the family, bond well and have legally mandated time off, vacation and flight ticket to their home country, etc. They are your employee after all but they really become part of the family. I couldn't imagine that in the UK without being of a considerable wealth and a top flight profession. Swiss nannies. Are Swiss nannies a specific thing with their own definition? Or just literally nannies that are Swiss? Because I feel like I'm missing something. Swiss nannies are just nannies that are Swiss. Not to be confused with Swiss army nannies which are your everyday carry all in one nanny slash plumber slash cook slash carpenter slash accountant slash pregnancy surrogate slash dog walker slash back scratcher slash nurse slash personal assistant nannies. My sibling has two kids. Works. And a spouse that works. They compared pricing of Daker versus getting an AU pair in the form of a foreign college student. Now, I don't know of hand if the AU pair was cheaper or how much more expensive, but I do know that's the option they went with because it made more economic sense. Not like they live in New York City, LA, or anything like that either they are semi-rural in a Midwest state. That having a whole A person live with you to help with the kids is economically comparable to dropping your kid off at a daycare is bonkers. Oh yeah. I also live in the Midwest and there were several people at my old job who had built in AU pair suites to house their AU pair or AU pairs. Because sometimes they had two. You don't actually pay the AU pair much I think. You do room and board, some fees, and then the cultural exchange aspect means the AU pair has time off to experience the culture or whatever. Probably very hit or miss depending on who you get, but probably not a bad option if you have older kids versus dealing with school before and after care or something. We looked into this too, and the reason is the marginal cost per kid is zero. Whereas at Daker it's paying for the entire second kid. That's where the economics gets into play. It would have been 250 slash kid slash week a Daker. Or 500 slash week total for 24k. At a relatively cheap Daker. Plus driving and everything else. An AU pair is typically 200. 250 slash W plus about 10k per year. Program fee for a total of 20k 23k. VS 26k, plus you need to have a room in your house dedicated. So for 2 kids it's a little less than break even, for 3 kids it's way cheaper, and you have to imagine the stress of illness, driving to and from, you can dictate what the kid does and learns, etc. Honestly the fact is, we are in a society where paying other humans, to do anything is ludicrously expensive, mostly because we have no safety net, so when you start paying for anyone, especially a citizen non-student who is not subsidized or anything. You have to imagine your fee going to pay for the health and other insurance, eventual retirement, transportation, etc. It's why even if you have like an engineering salary you pay people more than you earn per hour to do even non-technical labor, like cleaning or painting, or whatever, with the understanding that things like plumbing, electrician, those should probably cost money due to the education and skill requirements. My parents had two German AU pairs at separate times, and from what they said it's incredibly cheap. Basically just give them room and board and a little stipend and you get some low cost childcare. Anything involving owning a horse, true, definitely the fancy styles are a good indicator. But, then on the other side you have people, that live in absolute squalor, because they have nothing, after funding their horse pets. This is basically my grandmother. She's always been a free spirit kind of person, which I respect immensely, but this also means she owns and loves her horses and will remain poor while keeping them, to say nothing of her need to own no less than four dogs at any given time. At one point I actually even lived in the attic above the stable. I didn't know if I loved that or pitied her for it. That being said, she taught me how to ride and that was lots of fun. Wish I could do that more often. She seems to love taking care of her horses, and doesn't regret it at all, so I say more power to her. People that live in absolute squalor, because they have nothing, after funding their horse pets. Oh you mean my teenage life after my parents bought my older sister a horse. Caveat being people who use horses on a regular basis for work, egg herding, 
pack strings during guiding things of that nature. None of the ranch hands or outfitters out where I live are making much in the way of money. You reminded me of a comedy routine by Irish comedian Ed Bine where his describe class by saying something like not poor enough or rich enough to ride a horse's family is working class. As someone whose wife is very involved in the horse world, I can tell you there are a lot of very poor and middle class horse owners out there. The snooty rich horse owners exist too and naturally they tend to be full of themselves and look down on everyone else. A lot of the snooty rich owners don't actually ride their horses, the trainers do, and the trainers show them too. Then the owners get to brag about how amazing their horses. Horses themselves can be cheap. Boarding fees and competing in events is another story. My impression was that it was the maintenance that made them expensive. Food, bedding, stable, etc all adds up a lot. I know some people with a lot of farmland that got horses for free simply because people couldn't afford their recurring costs and just wanted to get rid of them. Carting. Hunting humans on private islands. Yeah. The rest of us have to be content with hunting humans on public islands. Sailing. Ironically I'm a sailor, because it was cheaper to live on a sailboat than land. And I was very very poor at the time. Subsistence sailing doesn't count. Sailing is cheap, or can be. Yachting is expensive. I love seeing people defending so many of these activities as not being rich people. Shh, lol. But then they mention some very specific reason why they were able to do the activity for a decent price. People say racing, but I regularly raced at the best circuits in Italy because my uncle is the Lord President of Rome and he just bought me all the stuffs. I don't know why people don't try having rich relatives. Gonna be honest point a lot of hobbies when you get into the top tier of things get very expensive. A lot of stuff mentioned here can be done on the cheap with ingenuity and passion for the hobby slash sport. For me, it's when a person starts a new hobby and buys the nicest equipment. That's when you know. Most winter sports. That gear ain't cheap. As a one ape hockey kid whose parents couldn't afford for me to be a hockey kid. For sure. Scuba diving. Then they name all the places in the world they've scuba dived. As a diver, I can firmly say our sport has two categories of divers. You have tons of rich AS who dive maybe once a year in some wonderful tropical location they flute up but suck at the sport because they rarely ever practice. These are the kinds of folks who will show up with thousands of dollars worth of gear but can't remember how to put it on. Conversely, there's also a big contingent of divers who are more working middle class and who dive wherever the hell they can locally. They usually don't have the most modern gear but they get a good amount of practice in whatever lake, river, pond, or other the body of water they can access locally. It still isn't a cheap sport, but doing a few days of diving a year gets a lot less prissy when you're not flying to another country for it. Fencing. As a fencer, yes for the most part, my club had a financial aid application, but those aren't common. All clubs do loan gear, but having your own is much better. The upkeep is also another problem, since gear breaks down, I guess to lower the cost. I try to do some repairs myself, but I don't have all the tools to do that. Unfortunately, I didn't grow up rich and got started through my public high school's team. When I decided I wanted to get into it more, the prices weren't great. I didn't know fencing was considered a rich sport until recently. Fenced for a few years despite being extremely working class. My HS hosted a club and we paid £20 a month to go once a week. Borrowed gear from the club every week. It was a blast. Although I was never a competition fencer. Just trained at the club. And had a few duels between club members. So maybe that's why I never saw it as rich sport. Fencing is an interesting one cause it's actually not super expensive. If you get started with a small club or school team or something. But once you try to venture out on your own into competitions. The cost of buying your own quality equipment and us for membership fees hits you like a truck going to space while wearing a Dumbus cowboy hat in a custom dick shaped rocket. Astrophotography. The telescope is expensive enough, but the camera, sheesh. Not really a hobby, but people that go to Disneyland slash Disney World at least once a year despite living several states away. All I remember from our one trip to Disneyland was my mom and I getting in a fight and her locking me out of the hotel saying, I thought this was the happiest goddamn place on earth. 
we still laugh about it to this day. I'm convinced Disney is responsible for half of all divorces. This is honestly an amazing example. To have such a good time at Disney World, that you want to go back every year, or even multiple times a year, is incredibly expensive. If you just slum it like a regular person, as my family did, it can be miserable and exhausting. Tickets are expensive, food is expensive, lines are super long, rides are just fine, but rarely special. Not if you go during an off-season. I went to Epcot during off-season and there was absolutely no line. There might have been a hurricane or something, but I had a blast. Horses. Gocketing. Horseback riding. Horse care looks expensive as F. Lacrosse. For some reason. I don't blame people for thinking this, though. Lacrosse only has this old reputation, because it used to be a sport of the northeastern prep schools. In the last few decades it has spread across the country and many public schools now have lax teams. Even in the south, there are organizations to provide cheap and even free gear to potential players. Definitely not a sport exclusive to the rich anymore. It's a great sport, and doesn't require ink time like hockey. Just some grass, a goal and few buddies. Good point. I wonder why it's not for everyone. Nothing stands out as exorbitantly expensive. The gear is expensive. My brother played, but got the gear cheap of someone, then sold it cheap to someone else when he stopped playing. When I got to college and realized that no one else knew how to snowboard or wanted to go trap shooting with me, I had to adjust my hobbies to slack lining and frisbees. I grew up relatively poor and trap shooting's fun as f bro I'll go with you. Racing of any real kind, whether it be quads, dirt bikes, mini sprints, etc. That shit's not cheap. Crew. Dolls. If they had an absurd amount of certain dolls and collect them, they were rich. Especially if they still have them as an adult. Lady I babysit for has one hundreds of dolls and an entire room filled with them. It's as creepy as it sounds. The whole room has its own insurance policy worth close to a million. That's how valuable it is. Most of these were collect when she was a child. When people say, especially anonymously, that one of their hobbies is travel. I get rich vibes off of that. Sometimes it's aspirational, but realistically if you're not rich you just don't have the money or availability to travel a lot. Ice hockey. Ice time is expensive. Being in the upper levels of competitive gymnastics, my daughter is only 6 and it already cost us $350 a month, plus another dollar sign 1k a year for travel and $450 a year for leotards, jacket, pants, and bag. If she sticks to it into her middle slash high school years and keeps excelling we are looking at dollar sign 1k plus a month for gym fees and booster club plus travel fees and uniforms. So probably closer to dollar sign 1.5k plus a month. When you factor that stuff in, we are upper middle class and right now can afford it. But I'm not so sure about when she gets older and once our other kid gets into sports too. You definitely have to have some money to afford it. It's like paying for college. Car collection slash customization. Following a band around the country slash world. Car people with more than one hobby car. As someone who plays golf. Definitely golf. Eater. I'm aware that you can play golf for cheap. But the really dedicated folks who get top of the line equipment and use expensive balls. Because they broke 90 once definitely spend a load of money on golf. And probably aren't super responsible with money. Hence that guy grew up rich. This person grew up rich. Hockey especially if they were a goalie. Being fired up into low earth orbit for 5 minutes. Of course this was before the pandemic hit, but going on multiple cruises every year, and they aren't travel agents. I'm in my 30s, and I have friends with stupid careers that own homes, and travel all the time. If you have an adult friend, that makes jewelry or pottery for a living, they're full of sh and come from wealth. Oh